have a good day. Begin part two. We are back. It is day two. Uh, we're moving on to question number 11. Uh, and to actually keep this 2005 holiday spice fresh, I utilized a photo of me and my sister on Christmas. And we'll get into that. There's a question. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. So you know what? To start the day off, happy Sunday. Ah, it's still not as good as it... It's still not good. This question comes from Lauren S. And Lauren S. asks, How much kombucha can you ingest rectally? Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, to ingest something rectally would mean to drink something through your butthole. Uh, and quite honestly, uh, Lauren S., I prefer to consume any liquids uh, orally. Like most, probably 99% of the people in this universe drink things through their mouth. And that's how I prefer to drink kombucha. Um, I don't really drink kombucha. Symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Uh, they're like living organisms in kombucha. Not my favorite thing. Uh, but if I had to answer your question hypothetically here, uh, to ingest as much kombucha rectally, I could probably consume around a gallon uh, worth of liquid. Uh, like when I, I think the fastest time I ever drank a gallon was this gallon of whole milk in one minute and 20 seconds. Um, to where did, did, I, did my friends tease me using a 50,000 volt taser and I fell backwards and broke my favorite seat on the couch? Absolutely. I was gonna say that was a great question. I'm not quite sure it is. Moving right along, question number 12. K.A. asks, do you have a job outside of being a YouTube creator? Um, hey, you know what? One of the greatest comments that I've received in the comment sections throughout the years are people telling me, LA Beast, why don't you get a real job? Uh, and in the back of my head, each and every single time I read that comment, uh, my, my brain is saying, forget you. Now, and the reason why is because prior to me doing YouTube, I've actually been doing YouTube now uh, the past 10 years full time. Now, it's when I quit my job back in 2013 as a beer salesman. Um, so, now, the previous jobs that I've held, uh, I was a beer salesman from 2006 to 2008, uh, and then again from 2010 to 2013. Uh, and the cool part about that job, every major holiday, I got a free case of beer. And then from 2008 to 2010, uh, and like right at the end of 2010 is when I started my YouTube channel, I was working for Pepsi out in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I was a merchandiser, which meant uh, the sales rep would go in and write the order and I would just like walk into the warehouse and make sure the soda got to the coolers and the shelves so people could buy it. Uh, but the cool thing was back in 2009, I was actually the merchandiser of the period. Uh, and as you can see, like I wasn't smiling in the photo and I wasn't smiling as I took the photo because I absolutely hated working for Pepsi. Uh, and during the Bring Back Crystal Pepsi movement, uh, all I could think about was the president of the company, Angel Martinez, telling me, that I wasn't persistent to be a sales rep within Pepsi, even though uh, previously I was a beer sales. And another pretty cool job that I held, I was a security guard at a country club right across from the Fox Studios in Los Angeles, California. Uh, and actually Adam Sandler was a member to this country club. And one Sunday, I, th I think he was driving an electric hybrid SUV back in 2008. Uh, and he, like, he was like, hey guys, what's going on? I have a couple friends coming in today. Um, and then like five minutes later, all I remember was a green Lincoln Town car and this, this guy pulls up and he's like, hi, I'm Jonah Feldstein here to see Adam Sandler. And I was like, I was like, why do you look so familiar? And he's like, oh, I'm Jonah Hill. Uh, and then the next guy, the next car that came in, it was a silver Prius. Uh, and he was like, hey, it's Rob Schneider here to see Adam Sandler. So even though I worked the overnight shift for that job, uh, it's still pretty cool. Uh, seeing all these movie stars. And currently, besides me trying to think of what my next YouTube idea uh, could be and then go execute that game plan, uh, I've actually been doing a lot of book cameo messages, like personalized video messages for LA Beast fans. I started that back in January of 2019, and since then, I've completed around 5,313 total cameo messages. So, um, sure, you know what? I'm still doing YouTube videos full time doing my book cameo messages, but uh, if I had to come down to it and go out and get a real job, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'd, I'd probably be like an Amazon delivery driver. Uh, just something to get outside, 
Now, or a landscaper. Get outside, do some exercise, and uh, out and about moving around as opposed to doing a desk job. And, and for the sake of moving this along here, that was a big sip. Question number 13 comes from Valentino H, who asks, my question would be, have you ever done a challenge that was so hazardous to your well-being that you considered giving it all up? And you know what, quite honestly, as far as like me ever doing an LA Beast video and wanting to quit and give up, no. But but if I had to answer your question, Valentino, about something that was probably the most hazardous uh, was when, sure, you know what, was I living at home with my parents at 35 years of age for certain circumstances? Absolutely. And after asking permission to film in their garage, um, I was like doing a science video and I mixed chlorine with Coca-Cola, uh, which I had seen on the internet uh, and the, the issue here was I had like safety gloves, eye goggles, and a hazmat suit. I was not expecting such a humongous chemical reaction. Uh, and the lesson I learned that day is that if you're going to mix chlorine and Coca-Cola, I tore I had gaseous fumes going into my face, eyes, nose, and mouth. Uh, do so, uh, do chemical experiments uh, in a well-ventilated area. All right, so here we go. Coca-Cola, chlorine reaction. Oh boy, there we go. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, <yeah. clears throat> Do not try this at home. Uh, I need to open up. Let's get the vent. Let's get the ventilation. probably the most hazardous and dangerous video and even though my parents garage smelled like chemicals for the next week uh, no like I, I still felt inspired to continue to create uh, here on YouTube because YouTube has pissed me off so many times throughout the years and I'll cheers to that as we finish off this 2005 holiday spice there's actually a particle in there and cool you know I'm just gonna drink the particle I'm going to open and pour this 1999 Coca-Cola Classic into this into this glass, and we're going to keep on keeping on. Okay, if I can open it, there we go. Again, it just it smells like uh, sugar, sugar water. Uh, I didn't really see any carbonation. 1999 Coca-Cola Classic. Uh, I've once consumed a 40-something-year-old Coca-Cola. Nice glass bottle from back in the day. Cheers. Ooh, this one smells just a little bit worse. But, hmm, we're gonna, it tastes like chocolate somehow. We're gonna have an issue here. Question number 14 comes from Brandon F. Who asks, when am I moving back to California? Or when am I going back to Cali? Cali, as Notorious B.I.G. would say. Um, uh, and you know what, quite honestly, like. I started my YouTube channel in California back in 2010. Uh, a lot of the growth of the, the LA Beast channel happened from 2013 to 2016 when I was in LA. Um, I've met some great people uh, and I've had some great times out in Los Angeles, such as when I used to rent uh, these like balcony rooms at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel overlooking this pool. Now, like Marilyn Monroe has swam in this pool. Uh, and like a great memory is when Nick Swartzen was dumping Jameson down my gullet to where neither of us remember this photo being taken. Now I've actually met Cato Kalin, who at one time in his life was O.J. Simpson's house guest, who's part of the trial of the century. Uh, and like I love pop culture stuff. Uh, to be able to call Cato Kalin a friend to this very day uh, is an amazing thing. So a lot of great things have happened out in L.A., but... Now, as I was born here in the state of New Jersey, aka the armpit of America, New Jersey is where my home is. It's where my family resides. If I had to move back to California, maybe in my golden years, uh, I'll head back. But uh, I think for now, uh, I really, truly enjoy being here.
in the greatest state of all time, the state of New Jersey. But the cool thing is I'm only a four hour airplane ride away from Los Angeles and uh, I recently went back to my old stomping grounds um, just, just to revisit. Uh, and you know what? Was I drinking Chardonnay on a yacht on a cloudy day when I went to visit? You're darn right I was. And it was awesome. And so was LA. Alright, cheers. Ah. And like, uh, honestly, like this, this 1999 Coke Classic just tastes like the, the syrup that they put into like whatever sodas they do now. It's like, it's not good. Now, but question 15 comes from Michael H. who asks, Who are you? Seriously, what are you famous for? Um, hey, you know what? Whenever I respond back to the comments on YouTube, uh, and, and people are like, Oh, LA Beast, you're the greatest of all time, or nobody can beat the LA Beast, LA Beast is a god, this and that. Um, I always tell people every single time I respond back and say, I'm just a regular guy who posts content to YouTube. I, I was doing that back then, and I'm doing that now, and somehow in between, some of the videos and challenges that I've done have gotten recognized, other videos have not. No, but but I've just I've always tried tried to stay even keeled mentally this this entire time, not, not a, let anything get to my head. Quite possibly, Michael H. You can go to my Wikipedia page. Some notable things that I've done on my Wikipedia page: the Crystal Pepsi comeback. Uh, and you know what? That was a team effort. Uh, it was a lot of great people from all over the world, uh, great people working together to create something even greater. Hey, good luck! Uh, and, and that was to bring back Crystal Pepsi, so heck yeah. The Chicago Cubs baseball curse, uh, where I ate that 40-pound goat. Again, here is that article from the Wall Street Journal. Now, and honestly, to have a Wikipedia page, uh, you need to prove that you are in fact like a public figure by referencing articles such as this Wall Street Journal article. I have been great, afforded many great opportunities such as attempting Guinness World Records titles, which I guess uh, I was in their publication in 2019 Guinness World Records book. If I move my sweet DuckTales 2 game, uh, CIB for Nintendo, I don't know if you can see it, but my Guinness World Records certificates, uh, they just act as a, a stepping stool for my Ghostbuster house, uh, as you can see in the background. Uh, what else do we have here? All I wrote in my notes here for this question, Michael H. I'm just a regular guy who started posting content to YouTube, and you know what? Uh, like I set goals for myself. Like I, I wanted to be recognized walking down the street. I wanted to create a video that would go viral and get a million views. Um, one of my goals was to be on a television program, where I've been on many. Uh, such as the season two ending of the Eric Andre show on Comedy Central. Uh, the one thing that I tell everybody is that, uh, you know what, so, sometimes in life as you're moving forward you're going to meet obstacles. Uh, you can like build a ladder and climb over it, you can plow through it, try and go around it, but it's just like you just got to keep on moving, just one foot, one step in front of the other, and as long as you move forward, like, good things and opportunities will fit themselves into your path and journey of life. Uh, and as I sit here, uh, doing YouTube the past 13 years, and the past 10 years full-time, I'm very grateful. I, I try and humble myself every single day, and you know, exactly. You know, like, stay true to myself, stay true to my fan base, uh, and, and exactly, I'm trying to think of what my next YouTube video is. So, I'm just a regular guy who posts content to YouTube, Michael H. And I'll, I'll cheers to that. This next question comes from somebody that I know. Uh, because I'll never forget it. This next question from AJ D asks, I'd ask whatever happened to that guy who shot fireworks at me in that one video. Uh, and unfortunately I can't show any video footage of this, but I'll uh, transition photos together. Um, I believe it was back in 2012. Uh, AJ, his friend Andy and myself, um, I, I, I somehow convinced them to shoot Roman Candle fireworks at me as I tried to dodge them with my Captain America shield. Uh, and in many of these screen grabs that I'm about to show you, uh, at so some points I did great at blocking the fireworks, in other parts I definitely got lambasted totally. Now, and the guy who was actually firing those fireworks at me because uh, I gave him permission to do so was in fact the man the myth the legend himself, AJ D. Uh, so, so, so thank you. Uh, and you know what the cool thing was? We actually filmed this video at a, a historical landmark house that was like built in the 1800s. And in the video, you can actually hear Andy. He's like, all right, cut, cut, cut. 
We need to go check for fire. Uh, to where, thank goodness, uh, that house still stands to this very day. But the greatest thing of all time about this fireworks video, even though it's been age-restricted and demonetized by YouTube, is that I never spilled my beer. Uh, like, I, like, I took a sip of beer to ease the nerves, put it down, and then, like, of all the places I was moving around, I, I never knocked over the beer. So, for that, uh, cheers, AJ, cheers, Andy, uh, and cheers to that house for being awesome. This next question comes from Chris K, who asks, Are you happy? Um, and you know what? Quite honestly, not, not only on YouTube, like the, the past 13 years that I've been doing YouTube, it's been a crazy wild journey. There have been many ups and downs. Uh, but there, like I said, there have been many great moments that I'll always look back upon in my YouTube journey. I'm grateful to be here today. I'm grateful to have met my wife. I've become a homeowner. Uh, this coming April, we're expecting our first child, which is a son, which is mind-blowing to me. So yeah, you know what? In life, overall, uh, I'm grateful for my family, my friends, and to be able to sit here and, and talk to all of you. Uh, but but as far as like YouTube, uh, am I going to admit this right now? Am I, am I a little bit burnt out? Yes. Uh, and, and a lot of the comments every now and then, it's like, oh man, what are you running out of ideas? And sure, you know what? Hell yeah. That, that, that happens to the best of us. And even though I feel like, yeah, maybe I, I have ideas. I'm always thinking, like I said, but sometimes like you have a great idea and you just, your, your mind, your body, your soul isn't into it. Uh, and if you're not into it, then it's exactly, you, you can't force it. Uh, and throughout the years, I've always been about quality over quantity. Uh, I'm doing my best. Like here I am doing a end of the year Q and A video, but, but, but in the same token, uh, it's allowing my mind to just like rest uh, like I'm having fun even though I'm drinking 1999 coca-cola But just to be able to sit here and like not have to worry about like Shoveling gauntlet piles of crap down my gullet. Thank you uh, for allowing me to do this video It's it's allowing me to take just a step back Allowing me to take a deep breath quite possibly get my bearings straight uh, and You know what maybe the month of December. I'll do a couple live streams, but just taking this rest at the end of the year will help my mind refresh itself. Uh, so come 2024, I can, boom, dive back in full speed ahead. Um, so, yeah, you know what? Overall, am I happy? You're damn right I am. Right now, currently, am I a little bit burnt out? Absolutely. Uh, but, but in the same token, final point here, I would always rather continue to create YouTube content than go back to, to work at those previous jobs that I once worked at. This next question comes from Kenny N, who asks, did you ever dislocate your sister's shoulder? Uh, and you know what, unfortunately, uh, I would hope at this point in life, my sister has forgiven me for not once, but twice. Accidentally, uh, I dislocated my, my sister's shoulder. And, and here's my sister again. Uh, we, were, we were embracing, having a nice hug on Christmas. Uh, and probably about two years prior to this, I think my sister was actually just born. Uh, she's probably like five or six months old. And, and all I was doing, I was like, wee! And like gently like dropping her onto the couch cushion. I was like, wee! No, and I think like one of the times that I was like, wee! And then like I just, like I, I may have dropped her about a foot out of my hands onto the couch cushion. Now, and instead of my sister laughing, she, did, she didn't stop crying for about 20, 24 hours. Now, my parents are like, what's wrong? What's going on? I was like, I, I don't know. Uh, and un unfortunately for me, to which I hope my sister is forgiving me for, I accidentally dislocated her shoulder. Uh, and the second time, uh, it, it was at my great grandmother's funeral. Rest in peace, Gigi. And, and it was like, you know, what is it my fault when I was in ninth and 10th grade, I was so strong for my age? No. Um, and accidentally, I was just sitting in a chair. I was like, I don't know, I don't know what we were doing, what game we were playing, but I, I, I grabbed my sister's hand. She tried to like run away from me. And like I accidentally dislocated her shoulder for the second time. But you know what? Um, even though everything I just said, but I just I need to get my bearings straight here. Everything I just said doesn't sound good. 
It really is. Because I've actually learned a valuable life lesson here. Uh, as in April, I'm expecting a baby son. Uh, and I'm not going to do those things to accidentally quite pop. I don't ever want to dislocate anybody's shoulder ever again. Kenny. And this next question comes from Stefan T, who asks, Hello, what is the coolest invention you've created thus far, in my own opinion? Now, you know what? Thank you, Stefan, for asking about uh, my engineering abilities. That's where I, I really don't have any, but throughout the years, somehow, some way, I've created some insane invention, such as uh, a machine that, where you can take a loaf of bread, and then, like, at the end of the assembly line, I liquefy it and can consume and drink a loaf of bread, which that video totally failed. I was inspired by the movie Happy Gilmore, to where Happy Gilmore's caddy on the golf course, he had a beer helmet. Now, and what I decided to do, I decided to create a powerized beer chucking helmet. Uh, and the only problem with that is that I, I utilized too much tubing. Now, so like the liquid, uh, like it, it had to travel too far and there wasn't enough power with the power drill uh, to allow it to do so. But nonetheless, that was a great idea, poorly executed. I once invented a machine to take a pizza and again, utilizing a paper shredder like it all went through the machine and then I, I power chugged a pizza using a paper shredder. That was actually the last video that I actually filmed at my parents' house in their garage. Uh, and like all of my, my next door neighbors and my parents were outside drinking wine, watching their 35 year old son and neighbor uh, do some crazy shit. But I would have to say overall, my greatest engineering accomplishment was when I created and invented a device to chug a six pack of beer in 39 seconds or less using a leaf blower. Uh, and I actually, I still have this awesome thing to this very day. I just, I took a two liter bottle, uh, a lot of super glue, some tubing from Home Depot, uh, and a lot of duct tape. Now, uh, pretty much you just, you fill it up with any liquid that you want. Uh, the leaf blower, 100 mile per hour wind speeds, I uh, would push uh, the liquid down, but then up through this mouthpiece. Uh, and literally, uh, as like the, the mouthpiece was over my mouth, I was like literally chugging down beer for 39 straight seconds, which meant that I had to breathe out of my nose. So by the way, you know what, once you learn how to use this thing, uh, it's a great invention. And a great question. We're almost at the end of this rainbow of holiday question and answers from the LA Beast. Uh, but not before I answer this question from Nick G. And Nick asks, how can we bring back the original LA Beast Raiders hoodie? I'd wear that thing every day if I owned one. Um, and you know what? Uh, honestly, uh, when it comes to opportunities, and especially for me here on YouTube and in general, my merchandise, uh, specifically like t-shirts, ma major opportunity uh, in, in the making here. And I'm pretty sure right now, like the only t-shirt design that really sells for my Spreadshirt shop, it's my face. And above it, it says, have a good day. That's like my best selling t-shirt. Uh, but my, my good friend, Chris, actually hooked me up back, I think it was like 2014 or 2015. He had a friend that worked for Thrilled.com. Yeah, and the folks over at Thrilled.com, they come up with some great LA Beast designs, specifically, you know, like the, the Raiders logo. Uh, and unfortunately, I think I got an email back in like 2017 or 2018. And because of copyright issues, and eh, like I, I've tried to make my own t-shirts for personal use. And if it's like a copyrighted image, like you, you can't make the t-shirt. Uh, so unfortunately, there were some copyright issues, and I believe like Thrill.com came to an end, uh, and so did the Los Angeles Raiders hoodie. Uh, but I don't know. Nonetheless, I've tried to work out some like merchandising deals. Like I have the ideas, like a get your bearing straight T-shirt, uh, and I have some other great ideas as well for merch. But yeah, it's an opportunity. Uh, if there are any graphic designers watching this, who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe maybe we can figure something out. Maybe not. I don't know. And you know what? Do I want to drink this? I don't. 
opportunities. This next question comes from Leslie H. who asks, do you have to run ideas by your wife so she can veto the really risky ones and or increase your life insurance? No, and you know what? Throughout the years uh, that I've known my wife doing YouTube, she's been absolutely 97.89% supportive uh, of the things and the ideas that I have had. Specifically, when I bought this Floby haircutting system from an Amish estate sale, uh, and I said I wanted to give myself a new haircut, she's like, you know what, Kevin? Go for it. Uh, and, and fair. You know what? The, the, what I didn't realize is that after I totally flobied my entire head, that I actually had uh, fiduciary obligations where I showed up looking foolish, but nonetheless, I fulfilled those obligations. During the pandemic, my wife actually cut my hair into a bowl cut with a rat tail. Uh, and quite honestly, fair. Uh, like, would I walk around in public with my bowl cut and rat tail with my wife to where she was slightly embarrassed? Yes. And I did, in fact, back in 2020, I asked my wife permission before I shaved my beard off using a high-powered shock back vacuum cleaner. And she was very supportive of me when I fell ill for five days. Uh, like, the, the issue was we had a fly problem up in the attic. So as I was, like, swatting hundreds of flies, uh, I actually utilized that same vacuum hose, which was all over my eyes, nose, and mouth, to, to shave my face, and I didn't realize that putting fly juice on your face will cause you to fall ill. Uh, but nonetheless, she was very supportive and took care of me. Uh, when I was sick from fly juice. And a lot of the times people say, oh man, like you should have a, an EMT or like someone there with you as you're filming my YouTube videos. And a uh, majority of the times, yes, my wife is in fact like sitting in the next room, like, like what the hell's going on in there? So uh, my wife is supportive. She's awesome. Um, and the great thing, the cool thing is she actually filmed this video. I was at the Renaissance Fair. Uh, when you take like the, the sledgehammer and try Whatever that thing is, like the feats of strength, she filmed that video. Now, I think here on YouTube that video has 13 million views, and on my Facebook page, it has like 50 million views. So, yes, my wife is responsible for like 60 million of my views on social media. Uh, why? Because she's the greatest. That's why. And she's very supportive, to answer your question. Yes. The second to last question comes from Brad S. Uh, who asked me a question which has nothing to do with YouTube. Now you know what? Maybe it does. Uh, now that I come to think of it. And Brad asks, What are my three favorite football memories? Uh, such as, like, uh, have I ever scored a touchdown as an offensive lineman and stuff like that? Now, to where, you know what? Uh, yes, I have scored a touchdown. Um... Back in probably, it was back in 2001, uh, I was a senior in high school, and somehow, some way, we were playing the team, the quarterback flipped the ball to nobody, uh, and like our nose guard, actually, like, you can see him like grab the ball, but like it went out of his hands, and like I was just right there, I was at the right place at the right time, I scooped up the ball, uh, and then I, I plowed into the end zone for a 15 yard touchdown as a defensive lineman, and then I proceeded to celebrate as if I had just won the Super Bowl. And as I'm thinking about it, uh, back in 2008, I believe, on my first uh, YouTube channel, KSTR51, that may be the first video that I've ever uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I think it was like December of 2008, which is crazy. The second football memory I have is from when I was playing college football at Fordham University. Uh, and we played Brown University to where uh, two-time Super Bowl champion Zach Diossi, he was the New York Giants long snapper, but when he actually played football at Brown, he was a linebacker, and, and he was like heavily recruited to play in the NFL. Uh, our team knew that he was like the best player on the field, and, and our coach allegedly told us 
Like, like if you can if you can take a shot and get a good hit on Zach Diasi, take it. No, uh, and like me because I'm I was psycho and I I'm still a little bit crazy here today. The play had happened. No, uh, like the referee was like literally blowing the whistle and Zach Diasi was out of bounds. And I just like came out of nowhere and I was like Bleh! and just like tackled him uh, into the sideline, which uh, like infuriated him uh, even more. Uh, and like from these photos, that, um, he, he did. He said, like, it was, like, one of the defensive linemen and, like, Zach Diossi, like, they pointed at me after that play, and they're like, you suck, and I'm going to kick your ass for the rest of the game. Um, and, yes, from these photos, I looked bruised, bloodied, and battered, uh, and quite possibly, like, I was going to cry. So, you know, so even though my senior year uh, playing college football was a living nightmare because we sucked, and even though that game and getting our asses kicked by Brown and Zach Diossi sucked, you know what, in conclusion, it's definitely a memory. But, but the, the final third football memory that I have is uh, somehow uh, during my senior campaign playing football at Fordham University, we won two games that season. One of which, uh, if we won a game on our home field, Jack Coffee Field, to where Vince Lombardi once played, you got to ring the victory bell. Uh, and like, I, I made it into the back page of the Fordham Observer newspaper, number 62. Uh, and like as I was ringing the victory bell, I was like, haha, one time in my entire career I was able to do that. Uh, and a fun fact is, the first person to ever ring the Fordham victory bell was President Harry S. Truman. So even though he rang the bell with a string, I once rang a bell that a president of the United States once rung. And the final question to this 2023 LAB's holiday question and answer, it's a great question, and I think it's a thinking question from Patrick Y who asks, what do you plan to do with the rest of your life, son? And quite honestly, Patrick, uh, do, do I know what's gonna happen tomorrow? No, do I know what's gonna happen a year from now? I'm not even close. Now, do I have a five-year plan? I have no idea. Uh, because you know what, Patrick, right here, right now, that's it. Like, I'm focused on finishing this last question uh, so I can get up and go watch the Buffalo Bills game. I don't know where life may lead me. I don't know what crazy opportunities may fit themselves into my path and journey of life. Uh, like I said that I'm a little bit burnt out on YouTube. Uh, I feel right now, personally, I'm trying to find uh, a new exciting inspiration, which I'm sure a lot of people are. Um, so yeah, you know what? I'm trying to search for that inspiration. And I feel that uh, come April, as my wife and I welcome our son into this world, I feel like uh, it's like my life is going to get turned upside down. Uh, and I feel like I'm going to be moving moving on my path and journey of life in a different direction. Uh, becoming a father, but I also feel that quite possibly becoming a father will in fact uh, instill within me that inspiration that, that, I'm, that I'm searching for right now. So... Uh, as far as what do I plan on doing with the rest of my life, I can tell you that, at least here for today, right now, besides watching the Buffalo Bills game and quite possibly being lazy on this Sunday, each day, like, I, 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 I try and I strive to be the best person that I can be. Uh, and I'm not perfect. Things don't always go my way. And sometimes it's difficult to take that one step in front of the other to keep on moving forward in life. But, you know what, I'm grateful to be able to, to share this, this awesome video with each and every single one of you. Thank you to everyone who still tunes in to the content that I try and think of, think up of and create. Thank you. Uh, I'm grateful for my family and friends uh, through my journey that have gotten me through some tough times. Uh, and all the people that, that, that show love and care towards me. Thank you, I, I'm appreciative. Uh, one day at a time, one step at a time is my motto. And just exactly, like my, my blinders are on, focused, thinking of my next YouTube video, doing my cameo messages, and excited to start a new journey of being a father. Uh, and being the best father that I can be each and every day. So, you know what, uh, I don't know if that answered that question, but um, I I'm grateful for everybody, I'm grateful for all of you. Happy holiday season. Stay safe, stay healthy. Spend time with the ones that you love, your families, your children. And you know what? 
Oh, and you know what? They, uh, oh, crap, I was about to end it nicely, but I, I have to drink the rest of this. Cheers. Happy holidays. Mmm. Now we can end this by saying it's the LA Beast. Catch you on the flip side. Have a good day. Ho, 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 ho.